Hey guys, it's Jova. We just want to remind you guys that your mental health is over. Every Life is not just uh, the happy moments, you know, and we don't talk about the sad moments. I felt that social media was missing all of those other experiences that make up life and so I wanted to hack the social media and in between your next cat video and before like the food porn that you saw, I wanted to have a space where you actually were in touch with your emotions. My name is Giovanni Varela. For the last three years, I've been running this social media page that combines artwork and quotes to bring about certain feelings and conversations more than anything. And the orbit of those conversations all revolve around mental health. So when it comes to choosing artwork for the page, I tend to feel the painting, the visual, and then I tend to also feel the quote or what the thought offers. Imagine that, for example, I go out fishing, you know, and some visuals are like really big fish, like really powerful stuff. And then I go fishing for quotes, which would be like, I don't know, in this metaphor, fish food. And so then I combine the fish and the fish food. And if they can do this together, where they interlock, then that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and I don't share my own artwork because I feel that I would be doing much more of a service and impact if I share a bunch of other people's uh, artwork and at the same time uh, open up the platform for other stories, not only myself, because I'm only one person, but if I can open up for, for it for millions, that's where the impact is. The idea of Breathe started when I became self-aware of the pockets in time that I was taking to myself to do nothing but, but breathing, right? And I realized how good that was to take a moment out of my day to simply feel that process. But when you do it consciously, it changes everything. You realize that you're a living creature. You realize that you're here, right? That you're present and that you are alive. For me, that began first, I started just posting videos on Instagram, 15 second long videos that would say, breathe in, breathe out. And then eventually it was just as simple as breathe. And I would put a landscape or a comfortable image in front of you for you to, to relax into it. And for you to remind yourself that there are pockets you know, breathing pockets wherever you are. I make sure that it's a comfortable enough space for people to feel comfortable enough to share their experiences. And whenever there is somebody that comes in with sexist, homophobic, toxic really, um, remarks, I make sure that I ban those people. Sounds intense, but I cannot accept people being bullied on the comments when I'm trying to create a safe space for people to like open up. It was 1 p.m. and it was August, August 16th. And I was simply really curious. It wasn't supposed to turn into like a big thing. I was literally curious. What are you guys thinking about right now? So the girl that sent that screenshot from Delhi caught me at a moment where I didn't know what to do in certain situations. For me, it's very special when people from pol politically opposite countries that are supporting each other. And so when we talk about the Delhi girl being supported by the girl from Karachi, Pakistan, but seeing in this new generation, you know, that they see beyond that and we see each other just as human beings who are, who go through the same things, who are vulnerable, have dreams, regrets, you know, and suffer and have courage and resilience and can experience love, then that is really, I think, where the empathy happens. The first message that I ever received that said that I, my page saved their lives, I didn't believe it. That sounds preposterous to say that a page, a quote, a post that you saw on Facebook saves a life, but from meeting so many people that went through that same experience, I get to see that sometimes saving a life is really not that difficult. If I can shift somebody's thought from like not seeing an exit and break, you know, that barrier, and they're able to see a way out, like, yeah, I completely believe that lives could be saved by shifting the perspective or adding a different thought that makes somebody not feel so alone. There's, there's always the danger when I share conversations about mental health through art. When those two collide, it's very difficult to not glamorize you know, suicide. And I'm always conscious with my post not to post something that is too romantic in language, too flowery in language. It's been romanticized so much by this myth of the troubled genius 
that goes through so much struggle, struggle and then eventually makes, you know, Starry Night, you know, like Van Gogh. Uh, and I have a problem with that because I refuse to believe that you need to suffer in order to be a kind, empathetic, self-aware human being that is aware of himself and others and cares uh, for others. For me, it's very important for people to know that I am not a healer, I am not a therapist, I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist. My training is art. I'm an artist, right? And I simply happen to be very empathetic to the point where I want to design spaces for people to, to open up and to heal. It's, it would be reckless and responsible and maybe both ethical and illegal to even attempt to provide some sort of cure or to even, you know, market the platform as the cure to anything. I need to be aware and okay with the reality that last night somebody existed that no longer is here with us today. It really began to hurt me when I realized that during the seven hours that I would be sleeping at night, I would get messages of panic, messages of crisis moments that would have, that if I was there, I would have probably been able to do something. But by the time that I wake up, like those messages were already like gone or I couldn't do anything. And so the best thing that I can do is try to make it as big as possible to create as big of an impact as possible.